Here's the deal. If you're watching this show Sunday, August 7th, it's my birthday. If you're not watching this Sunday, August 7th, well, it was my birthday. In any case, rather than have people come here and make stuff for me, which would be birthday present stuff and the obvious thing to do, I wanted to give you a present. So today's show, my 10 favorite food related things that we make in this house all the time. It's going to be so great. Don't go away. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Sam. Happy birthday to me. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy. <laughs> this show is about food that's big in taste and small in effort. Yeah. Man, is that good. Totally easy stuff anyone can make. Look at, look at them going already. And everything comes from a supermarket. You take all those other cooking shows like this. You don't need them anymore. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. So here's the style for today. We're gonna go breakfast, lunch, little appetizer, and then some dinner things. And they're gonna be condensed because I don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm gonna go quick, but the recipes are on the website, should be fine. We start by just cutting up some bacon and getting into, into the pan. And I haven't said what I'm making. Slow scrambled eggs, so good. I make this like probably three, four mornings a week. Just break this up a little bit. While the bacon cooks, we cut the rest of the vegetables that are going in this. Starting with some red pepper, yellow onion, and some mushrooms. I'm using shiitake mushrooms. Use what you want, but these things are amazing. Vegetables are cut, bacon's ready. We take the bacon out to a plate, and now we take out most of the grease, leave a little in, and this is what we use to cook the vegetable. And that bacon grease gives flavor to the vegetables and everything's amazing. So all of this really can go in at once. At this point, it's really just about softening, right? So this is probably five minutes or so. All right, vegetables almost ready. Time for the eggs. So four eggs, pork. We add some salt and pepper. And a little cheese. Can add the cheese anytime, I love to add the cheese now. It's all mixed through. I want the heat down low. Do you remember what I said? Slow scrambled eggs. So now we'll add a little bit more butter because we don't want anything to stick, right? So the butter goes in, the bacon can go in. Now the eggs. Now the key to this, slow scrambled eggs take a little time. If you cook them on major heat, they're gonna really dry out quickly. Look, I could make scrambled eggs in about 30 seconds in a hot enough pan. They wouldn't be very good. This is what I want. I want them to be super delicious, subtle, and creamy, which are ridiculous adjectives to use, but that's what I want. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Be patient, be gentle. It will pay off for you, I promise. And here they are, gently scrambled eggs, slow scrambled. This for me on a piece of toast, one of the, the perfect breakfasts I can have. And an egg has 70 calories in it, which is nothing. So a couple of eggs, 140 calories, some vegetables in there, a little tiny bit of cheese. You're probably around 200 calories for a breakfast. Oh my God, you can't do better than that. All right, but we can't stall on this. It's up for the next one. Okay, number two, and by the way, I will have a different t-shirt on for every one of the 10 things we're making today. Number two is a smoked salmon benedict with the dill hollandaise. We start by cracking an egg into a little small dish. The only important part of this stage is that you don't break the yolk. If you break the yolk, you're screwed, you have to start again. Well, you don't have to start again, but it's not gonna be a poached egg. It's gonna be a gross egg cooked in water, and who wants that? To a small pot filled with water, we've added a couple tablespoons of vinegar that helps pull the egg bits all the way together. Then with bubbles, just gently breaking on the top of the water, you'd stir in either direction, thereby creating a vortex. You slowly lower the little cup to the water's edge and at the last second you go, boom. And the swirling water and the vinegar help to pull the egg white together with the yolk. Everybody's happy. All right, now we're gonna make blender hollandaise. And blender hollandaise goes like this. 
Three egg yolks go into the blender, like that. The blender goes on the stand. We need the juice of one half of a lemon, a pinch of salt, and we blend this, starting off slowly, until it becomes a pale yellow. I want about a quarter of a cup of fresh dill. Pale yellow, right? Now we take one stick of butter, and we try not to spill all over the place while we gently introduce the melted butter into the blender. Let's add the fresh dill. We let it thicken. Let's check our egg right here. Perfect, egg's perfect, egg is perfect. I'm gonna just set it right there for a second. You could use an English muffin, you could use uh, a waffle, you could use anything. I'm using a biscuit. Just add a little butter to this. All right, let's plate this. So we've got the biscuit. Now we're gonna take some smoked salmon, some lox, some food that's important to my people. And we're gonna put some layers of it on here. We'll make a nice little bed and a landing spot for our perfectly poached egg. Comes like this. And now ready for this? The dill hollandaise. Oh, shut the hell up. A little pepper. Ah, number two's down, almost ready to take a bite. Watch right here, here's our yolk. See that? That's what we're talking about. You can do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. It's really simple. The lox is delightful. The hollandaise with the dill is amazing. We've got eight more things. Don't go away, it's my birthday day. Remember, my gift to you, stuff I eat. Which is almost selfish, but hey, it's my birthday. I can do what I want. See you in a second. This is Sam, the cooking guy. Welcome back to Birthday Show. We're making 10 of my favorite things. We're on to number three, the tomato and potato chip sandwich. <laughs> I know, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Sam, it's too simple. How could it be any good? It's the combination of the ingredients that make it fantastic. Here's how it goes. We start with white bread. I'm telling you, this sandwich, as it was told to me by Kevin McDermott, said it had to be white bread. So we start with white bread. And then we use, well, I'm using Japanese mayonnaise. Kevin used something called Heinz salad cream. Now go find that right now and see how, how you make out. Japanese mayo. So a good layer of that, right? Done. Now we need some tomato. So tomatoes from my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's garden, thinly sliced, not too thick. And we take the tomato and we go on here like this, like this. Fresh ground pepper, very important, very important. And you really don't need salt because the next ingredient is a handful of big potato chips. And these are the kettle chips, not regular ones, kettle ones. And you go like this, you throw a whole bunch of them on top. And now the other piece of white bread goes on top. And the crucial part of this whole thing is when you take your hand and you go like that. It's the squish. Then you take your knife and you cut. Mm-hmm. That's important. Oh, crap. You have no idea. All right, number four. Uh, the sandwich is one of the greatest sandwiches ever. This is one of the greatest tacos ever, one of the simplest ones. Mashed potato taco. Mashed potato taco. Start by cutting up some green onions to a fine dice. Now we take a tortilla, I'm using a corn one, and by the way, I'm using a little uh, appetizer size one, sour cream. Remember the potato chips in the uh, last uh, tomato potato chip sandwich? They're back. Any kind of mashed potatoes. If you got some left over from the night before, this is one of the greatest things to make. If you need to buy some because you don't want to and you're lazy, that's fine. I may or may not have made those. I'm not sharing that. And by the way, it's my birthday, so I can do anything I want. Tortilla goes down. We put on some sour cream. Then we put some mashed potatoes on, like that. Then we put on some hot sauce. I'm using Cholula. Then go the finely diced green onions. And don't, 
like cheap out on those and go, oh, it's too much, I can't handle it. It's the crunchy little bite of the green onion that makes this. But doesn't make it more than the crunchy bite of you know what. The kettle potato chips, you'll be glad you bought the kettle ones. Like this, don't just drop them whole. We crunch and we drop on top. And then ladies and gentlemen, we pick it up, we kind of stuff everything, we size it up and we go, well, that looks interesting. I wonder if it's going to be any good. And then you take a bite and you go. Good. That's the best thing I've ever eaten. Number four, but it could be number one if we're counting like that. Number five, and it's an appetizer. And it's called salt and pepper shrimp. And we love the hell out of it. And we make it all the time. Turn your walk on. Then do the following. Cut about a one inch piece of ginger to a fine dice. One big clove of garlic. Now you take some green onions, you cut the ends off, and take the remaining lengths and just cut them into like one inch pieces. Now you mix some kosher salt and fresh ground pepper in a little bowl. A little kosher salt and some fresh ground pepper. A lot, cover it. A little layer of oil. Then in goes shrimp. Then goes the ginger and garlic. And then goes the green onion. And now, it's just this. You can see, getting pink already. This is gonna take, if your pan's hot enough and your shrimp are not ice cold, this is maybe gonna take you a minute and a half or two minutes. Okay, we're right now here near the end, so now at the end, we're gonna take and we're gonna put the salt and pepper, and we're gonna use a lot, but before you freak out and go, Sam, that was too much, these are deveined but shell-on shrimp, which means the shells are gonna, which means I can't turn my oven off, which means the shells are gonna absorb most of the salt and the pepper, thereby leaving you with a delicious thing underneath here. There you go. Look at that. And the beautiful part is that you eat this with your fingers. You hold it so that the tail goes over the top. You separate the shell. You've got shell on this side and shell on this side. Then just hold the butt of the shrimp. And if you squeeze where the tail meets the shell, most of it should just pull off like that. A little bit left. And then that is a perfectly cooked, not overcooked, shrimp. Seasoned so beautifully, you won't believe it. The shell. I'm loving today. All right, when we come back, we move into dinner. This is Sam, the cooking guy. Welcome back to my... Welcome back to my birthday show. We're making things that I like to make because it's my birthday, it's my show, it's my house. And what would a birthday show for me be without a cocktail of some sort? So we're making my margarita. Now look, you maybe you've seen me make my margarita before. This show was about the things that I like. So we start by ice in the shaker. We're gonna use one part tequila, half parts sweet and sour. And sweet and sour is just readily available in a supermarket, half part. A splash of Rose's lime juice, tiny splash. Splash of Grand Marnier, and then a little fresh lime gets squeezed in, and some fresh orange. And then it's simple. The lid goes on, you shake and get yourself a glass. For our purposes today, we'll use a Sam the Cooking Guy glass. Ice, then we just pour. Lovely color. And we come back again with another small piece of orange and lime. It's all about the freshness of the fruit that goes into this thing. And that's it. It's fantastic. But this is only number six. There's seven, eight, nine, ten. Four more to go. We can't be standing around just drinking. I gotta make something. Oh, it's dinner time. All right, number seven. I'm looking at my list. Yes, crispy salmon. 
we have in this house at least once a week, probably in the top three things that Kelly will request. Little filet of salmon. No skin on because she doesn't like the skin, that's fine. We give it two things. Some sesame chili oil, like this. Both sides, get it on. And then salt. We go face down in the hot pan. When it gets about a quarter of the way cooked, up the side, we'll flip it. Do the same on the back, stays rare in the middle, it's perfect. While this is cooking, I've taken a little bit of mashed potatoes, put some diced green onion in here, it's on the heat, and then I'm gonna give it a tiny little splash, regular sesame oil. We're gonna mix that, and we'll serve it with that. Actually, with a little salt. Everything needs a little salt. You see the color changing, right? It's almost there. I'm gonna say it is there. Backside, we go like this. As soon as that's done, we plate and weed. It's so good. And now we plate. We start by putting some of the mashed potatoes down first, right there. And then the salmon, right there. And then a little more green onion, right there. Here's the beautiful part. Look, the salmon in here, still rare in the middle. So there's no reason to overcook it. And then a bite. With a little bit of the, with the green onion. Mashed potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. The, the, I'm telling you, this salmon is unbelievable. But wait, this is number seven. There's another one, it's number eight. All right, it's number eight. Yes, it's number eight. And now I'm making uh, scallops. And I promise this is the last time I'm gonna use green onions today. So uh, dice up the green onions super fine like we normally do. We're gonna use about half of these and put them in this butter that's right here. And then we'll cut up some uh, fresh ginger. This goes in with the butter and we mix. Mmm, a couple things for the scallops. A little bit of oil, kosher salt, fresh ground pepper, always. And here we go. If you don't hear that sear, when you put the scallops in, clearly it's not hot enough. Now, while that cooks, that's probably gonna take a minute and a half to two minutes on that side. I will get some rice ready. Oh, not in there. Why would I have rice in there? I, I'm looking for a rice bowl that's right here. With my baby cup. I got this back to my mom. It says Sammy. And look at how beautiful it is. There's no date, but it's banged up. Obviously, I sat in my high chair like this. Just screaming for green onions or something. Okay, so a little bit of rice. A little bit of rice, come on, come on. Scope the scallops, come, come. Now that, see that, see that? That's a little sear. That's exactly what you want. Now we're gonna give that about 30 seconds. Then we're gonna add some of the butter. Now, as the butter melts, we're just gonna baste on top of the scallop. When the butter gets brown, it gets that nutty little kind of extra flavor to it. Scallops are getting the benefit of that. And we're out. We simply take one of the scallops and we plate it on the rice. Look at that. Did you see that? And just a tiny little bit more of the butter. Right there. And a little green onion. There you go. Here's what we do. We come up and we look at the scallop and we look at the plumpness. We look at the juiciness of this. Exactly what you want. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. And this rice, that's, oh God, mm -hmm. that's pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic. Okay, but 
as much as I like to stand here and eat, I can't because we got a major thing to cook for dinner. As we continue with Sam, the cooking guy's birthday show, 10 things in 23 minutes, 10 shirts too. Been paying attention? This is Sam, the cooking guy. Welcome back to my birthday show. I'm making my 10 favorite things that we have in this house on a very regular basis. Number nine is a steak. And in fact, it's a giant ribeye. My favorite cut. It gets three things to start. First, a little oil. Neutral oil, I'm using canola. And then, nothing but kosher salt. And look how much. This is a big piece of meat. You have to season it really well. Like that and then fresh ground pepper. And once again, lots of fresh ground pepper. And now simply, it goes into a super hot cast iron pan. We're gonna give this steak about a minute and a half, two minutes aside without touching it. That's it. Okay, first side. That's what you're looking for. All that browning, all that searing, that is just gonna be beautiful flavor. All right. Minute and a half on that side, and it goes. My oven is 450 degrees. There's no way to cook something that's super thick like that and get it where you want on the outside and the inside just by cooking it over direct heat. We let the oven ambient temperature cook it the rest of the way. We want to yank it at about 130 degrees, let it sit a couple minutes, then enjoy the hell out of it. All right, so. We're right around the 130 mark, Michael. I've got one unnecessary but delicious thing to do. In my fridge, I always keep some kind of compound butters. And a compound butter, I think we've talked about it before, is butter that's just been mixed with all kinds of herbs or garlic or seasonings or that kind of stuff. This happens to be one I've mixed with green onion and diced chipotle peppers. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a little coin of this Set it right on top. Cover this whole thing with foil. And now let it sit five, 10 minutes. Let the juices go back inside, redistribute, then we're gonna cut it. Look at this. And it's beautiful. But here's the point. If you just did it on the stove top, it would be this little tiny bit of gray all the way through, you couldn't get it there. But this is perfect. And a bite of this with just a little bit of this compound butter for just a little bit of extra kick and spice. Ribeye, worth spending a little bit more. Extra juicy, marbled, lots of fat, good fat that does really wonderful things to the flavor. All right, this is nine. And number 10 would have to be some dessert thing in a birthday theme show, right? But you know, I'm not really a big dessert guy and I don't like to make too many desserts, but there's one person in my family who is the dessert queen. That's my sister-in-law, Cheryl. I love you, sweetheart. Hi. In fact, we call her the Martha Stewart of the family. You may remember Cheryl from her previous appearances on Sam the Cooking Guy. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, I usually wait until it's way cooler. Oh, 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 oh. And what have you made? Salted brown butter Rice Krispie treats because you said anything but nothing chocolate. So what are they? Describe. You know, they're just Rice Krispie treats but kicked up a notch. You brown the butter, a little bit of sea salt, and a bag of marshmallows. A 10 ounce bag of marshmallows. 10 ounce. And the brown butter adds that extra nutty, yeah. beautiful flavor. Yeah. Can we can we eat one or? Of course you can eat one. And it takes like maybe an extra five minutes to make these over regular rice krispies. Sorry, sorry. Not that there's anything wrong with regular rice krispie treats. No, there's not, but how's that for a plate? That's a big plate. That's a big, that's a big birthday. We'll do this. We'll make it all festive. We'll put some confetti. Confetti too? Here we go. You bought ones that don't like. <laughs> <laughs> the F there share. There it goes. Oh, there you go. 
I'm not gonna sing. Do you want me to sing? I can't sing. Do you want to? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandy. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. A little longer. Can you stretch it out another phrase or two? And no. Many I'm... more. <laughs> well, I can't. All right, let's have a bite of one. Shall we? Yep. These look delicious. Thank you. Okay, the brown butter makes oh, all the difference. Cheryl's recipe is on the website. All the recipes are on the website. Make the food that we make because... It's good. Well, it's kind of arrogant to say that, but... I said it. It is good. It is good. We eat simple, we eat great. You should too. Don't eat the same thing all the time. Make Cheryl's Rice Krispie Treats with the brown butter. 10 ounce bag. She had to make them like eight times. She <laughs> up. Sorry. All right, thanks for being here. Uh, go to the website, cookingguy.com for the recipes. See ya. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs>